Well, good morning. I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm glad that uh, you could join us, whether you're here or whether you're on live stream, and we appreciate that so much. But uh, we're going to continue our walk in the book of Matthew, and we're still in chapter, actually it's 15, not, where is that? Okay, it's not that, it's 15, <laughs> chapter 15, verse 21 through 28, if you've been turning to chapter 13, we're beyond 13, okay? All right. Um, I want to ask you a question this morning, and, and, and I guess... It's, it's a more rhetorical question because I, I don't really want to know. <laughs> I just want you to think about it, okay? How many people here have a problem, a need? Think about that. If we are honest with ourselves, we would probably think, well, I've got more than one, but I do have needs in my life. I'm not talking about wants. I'm talking about needs. And, and they come in various kinds of, of uh, per individual because everybody's need is different. I have needs, different from your needs, different from Juan's needs, different from Brent's needs. We, we all have needs in this life. And so as we look at that, there could be any kind of needs, family needs, uh, problems with children, uh, financial difficulties, diseases. Uh, COVID-19 seems to be on everybody's mind. And then also, uh, some of our needs are we just have older parents and we're trying to take care of them. Come on up with that. I, sh I asked her to get me some water, but that, yeah, thank you very much. Okay. So, we all have needs and we can list them uh, on and on and on. But we need help with our needs from the Lord. And if we stop and we ask the Lord and we cry out to Him, if we know Him through His Son, Jesus Christ, the Word of God says He will help us. He will help us. The problem is, sometimes those problems are so large, we don't think they can be overcome. That's because we're trying to do it in our own strength. You know, it's like uh, uh, the passage today, uh, the, the sermon title is, I'm thankful for crumbs. You know, Lord, we, we want to, you to help. I don't need the whole loaf of bread. I just like the crumbs. I think the crumbs would do fine for me. And uh, believe it or not, that statement is made in the passage we're going to be reading today. Because you see, uh, the situation was that Jesus, after just confronting the Pharisees and, and the scribes in, in Galilee, he decided that it was time to take himself and his servants or his, or his disciples away and get away. He did this several other times in Scripture where they just got away. Uh, they prayed. They relaxed. They got their, their food that they needed. They got the rest that they needed. And this is one of those times. But the strange thing about this passage, there's a couple of strange things, but one strange thing is he went towards Sidon and Tyre. Now, that was predominantly Gentile country. And, uh, I mean, when Israel came into Canaan years and years, hundreds of years before, when they came in, the Bible says that Joshua and the children of Israel were supposed to conquer the Canaanites. And they were supposed to make sure that none of them lived. Well, that didn't happen. And so for the most part, the people of, of, of that land that the, the Israelites did not do away with, they lived way up north in Siren, uh, Sidon and Tyre. So Jesus was going to a place full of Gentiles, but he was also getting away from... Uh, the crowd that wanted to crown him king and the Pharisees and the scribes who wanted him killed. And so he went a place where nobody would suspect him to go and he took his disciples. Now, that being said, it sets the scene for something that is one of the most unusual passages in all of Scripture. So if you will, look at verse 21 of chapter 15 with me. We'll read. Then Jesus went out of there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon and behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Now, there's a woman who comes, and Matthew describes her as a Canaanite woman. A Canaanite woman uh, was particularly from Matthew's writing because, remember what we said about Matthew? He's writing to Jews, right? 
to make them understand who Christ was. And so to relate, he was making sure they understood that this woman was just not, like Mark says, a, a, a Syro-Persian or a, a Greek, but she was from the lineage of the Canaanite people. Now, and she comes and she says something that you wouldn't necessarily hear a Greek say. She says, what? O Lord, son of David. Now, that represented the fact that she understood who Jesus was. In the passage over in chapter 7 of, of Mark, which is the same instance, Mark calls her a Greek, a Syrophoenician a woman, and she was crying out to the Lord, and she had no reason to do that. She was not, how can I put this? She was different from the Jews by birth and by the way she lived. So you have a scene here where Jesus was trying to get away, but then they had this woman calling him the son of David, and Jesus did not want people to know where he was. We know that from both of those sections in Matthew and Mark because it says when he got there, he went into a house because he didn't want anybody to know he was there. Now, we can read a lot into that or we can just take it for what it's worth. I tend to think that he just wanted to go away with his disciples and have a time of relaxation and refreshment. But he couldn't. This woman was calling out to him. It says that she cried, have mercy on the Lord. That word cried in the Greek means loud and continual. In other words, it wasn't somebody coming up to you know, like uh, Justin saying, hey, Justin, can I have a few minutes? It was loud. Lord, have mercy on me. And she continued to do it. And she said, my daughter is vexed. My daughter is possessed by a demon. And I need your help. Well, here comes another strange thing in this passage. Jesus, in verse 23, but he answered her not a word, and we can read into that, he ignored her. He just ignored her. Have you read anywhere else in Scripture where Jesus ignored anybody? Isn't that strange? Now, if you go with that, you can think how cold and heartless Jesus was to this woman. He was treating her just like the Gentile she was. Or, I think there was a deeper meaning there why he didn't talk to her. Well, he ignored her, he continued to, and the disciples said, listen, <laughs> um, send her away, for she cries out after us. In other words, the disciples were saying, we don't place any value on her, you don't place any value on her, so just either answer her or let's leave. Let's get away from her. But then... Jesus says something that's another strange saying in verse 24. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That sounds pretty cold too, doesn't it? He looked at the disciples. I think this was pointed toward the disciples and she heard, hey, I came to bring what? A message to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which implied she's a Gentile. I'll have nothing to do with her. That was strange because hadn't Jesus already healed some Gentile people's family, the centurion's servant? That was a great one. He was a Gentile. Jesus had also probably healed many other Gentiles as they came to him. So why this particular time he chose to say this? I think most of all it was a teaching moment for the disciples, and it's a teaching moment for us. You see, this woman had a problem that she could not handle. Matter of fact, the people she came from had many gods. I, they were, I looked up a list of gods that the Canaanite people worshipped. It was more than 30 people, thirty gods that they worshipped. I mean, they had a god for everything. They had a god for uh, the wind. They had a god for fire. They had a god for food. They had a god for... You name it, they had a god for it. And so with that background, her daughter needed help. And the Bible says over in the Matthew account or the Mark account of this, that she knew about Jesus. And when he came, she found him because she believed that if she found this son of David, she could ask and he would give her help. But so far, all we've gotten from the Lord for this woman was he ignored her. That's so unlike him. 
Would you think that Jesus would have ever ignored anybody in need? He doesn't, and he won't. So why does he do this? Why would he, on purpose, single her out, ignore her, and then he says this, what I have is for the house of Israel. 